Hello again, everyone. I'm Dr. George Simon, and welcome to another edition of the new Character Matters program. This is the program where we talk about what I consider to be the defining issue of our time, the character crisis that we've been in for some time now, and that has affected every aspect of our lives, especially our intimate relationships. And today I'm going to be talking primarily about covert personalities and character disorders. I've written an article about this same topic on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com. You see the URL up at the top of the screen here. And in that article, I reference several other articles that you might want to access about various topics related to this topic. But suffice it to say, in our day of fairly widespread character dysfunction, there are individuals who simply are not who they appear to be. They're simply not the, the kind of individuals. They not only style themselves as someone different from who they actually are, but they also uh, conceal their true motivations and agendas. And unfortunately, you don't usually realize this until you've invested quite a bit in a relationship. And then you find out all too late who the person really is and what they've really been up to. So I want to talk today about covert personalities and how they get to be the way they are and how to spot them and how to do a better job of discerning on the front end of a relationship who someone truly is and what they're really wanting in the relationship with you. You know, for a long time, there's been so many misconceptions about why and how people operate, largely stemming from our traditional psychology paradigms Paradigms that taught us that folks were pretty much oblivious to their true motivations about things, to the unresolved emotional conflicts and cares and concerns that drive their behavior. So most of the time we, we thought that uh, folks simply didn't know what they were doing, weren't aware of uh, some conflicts that they had to work out uh, that made them act the disturbing way that they acted. And as a result, we gave certain behaviors a pass or we made certain assumptions. We made certain assumptions about not only what was motivating the person, but what needed to happen to help the person change. But as I point out in my latest book, Essentials for the Journey, and as I have pointed out in the past in some of my other books too, especially Character Disturbance and In the Sheep's Clothing, both of those books, there's a difference between truly unconscious behavior and behavior that has become reflexive, automatic, relatively unthinking. So while some folks behave in a habitually problematic manner, acting fairly reflexively, doing things as they've always done, and without paying it much attention, that doesn't mean that they don't know what they're doing, and that doesn't mean they don't know why they're doing it. And so it is with some of the covert personalities. Now these days there's a lot of talk about covert narcissism and I'm going and I'm going to begin a discussion about that in just a moment. But there is a variety of narcissist that I describe in two of my books as aggressive personalities. These are entitled self-centered folks who also are out to dominate and control in relationships. Now, frankly, they're out to dominate and control, period, in any situation, but especially in relationships. 
But the fact is that if they were upfront about that, if they knew that you knew that all they wanted to do was to dominate in the relationship and to control you and to have their way all the time, if that was upfront and clear and obvious, then they might encounter resistance. So there's a strategy here, a very deliberate, conscious strategy to conceal the true agenda. And, as I point out in my book In Sheep's Clothing, such folks prefer to use certain tactics to manipulate and control, to make you think that they're doing anything but what your gut suspects that they are doing, which is trying to dominate and control you. I call these folks covertly aggressive personalities because they're more than just narcissistic. They're distinctly aggressive in their interpersonal style. They always want to have the upper hand. They always want to win in any contest as they see it with you. And they want to control the situation and to have their way. They want to be on top and in control. And they use a variety of tactics to do it. And I outline them in my books. But today I want to talk about those folks that are not perhaps so distinctly aggressive in character, but are still not the persons that they claim to be. These covert narcissists, as they've been commonly called of late, but I want to make a very important point about this. Yes, there are covert narcissists. However, much of the information that you can find about this is biased by the fact that there's little appreciation for the wide variety of narcissistic individuals out there. Narcissism, like all character disturbance, is a spectrum phenomenon. There's a wide variety out there of type and degree. There are some narcissists whose self-centeredness, sense of entitlement is relatively mild and they're relatively harmless in relationships. There are other narcissists whose egocentricity, whose sense of entitlement whose callousness, whose penchant for using and abusing others is rabid, is extreme. These malignantly narcissistic individuals are a whole different character. There are also different traits that sometimes accompany narcissism, making the narcissism somewhat palatable. In several blog articles, I talk about such narcissists, such as charmers, amorous narcissists, folks who come across as really quite likable, who have the secret to interpersonal connection, who know how to connect with folks, and who um, appear quite likable, can endear your friendship very easily. Uh, have the skills to make you feel comfortable in the relationship with them as they subtly, subtly proceed to use and abuse you, just like any narcissist would. And you may even find their style of interaction so palatable, so inviting, actually, that you get pretty hooked and you're not at all dismayed and you're not at all put off by their uh, way of being and interacting with you. Let's take, for example, the archetypal charmers. 
the folks who know how to say all the right things, do all the right things, who are quite likable, who establish relationships with ease, who appear to be interested in you and may indeed be interested in you. You know, interest itself is an intoxicating factor. When somebody sees something in you that they really like, this can be infectious. It's, a, it's an automatic boost to your sense of self-worth. It's an automatic boost to your self-esteem. Hey, he or she seems to really like me, be interested in me. This makes me feel good. And this is natural. But there's a difference, as I mentioned in many articles. There's a difference between interest, which can have all kinds of motivations and reasons behind it, and regard. Regard for you as a person of worth and value, and wanting nothing but the best for you, and wanting no harm to come to you. That kind of regard is more closely akin to genuine love. Whereas interest alone can be an indication of several things. A person can be interested in you and can charm the socks off of you, for example, because they see something that you bring to the table in the way of value. Perhaps they have just happened to notice that you come from a well-heeled family, that you have status, prestige, maybe power, maybe money. Perhaps they're simply intrigued with your physical appearance. Perhaps they would regard you as good arm candy. There are a lot of reasons these days that folks of impaired character Folks with too many narcissistic traits in their character can be interested in you. And if you mistake that interest for regard, and you mistake that amiability and likability and charm capacity for character, you won't know how used and abused you have been until it's far too late. Character vetting is a really lost science. It's a really lost art. People used to take the time to discern, and they used to know what to look for. We've lost that capacity. And we live in a tough age, an age where it's harder than ever to discern because character disturbance of one type or another and one degree or another is so widespread. There's another kind of more benign narcissist, and that's the amorous narcissist. The amorous narcissist appears as the penultimate lover. They just love people, it seems. But though what they really love, and doesn't become obvious right away, is not so much to truly love, but to be loved. And not necessarily loved in a wholesome sense, but thought well of. Sometimes um, affirmed sometimes adulated, and in extreme cases, worshipped. What they're really looking for is your favor. And they'll do what they have to do to get it. And not the least of those things is showing favor to you. Making you feel special. It's all part of the art of what I call ego massage. I'll make you feel great, but I fully expect that in doing so, you will see me well too, and you will think that I hung the moon. 
It's part of a style. It's part of a tact. It's part of a way of relating that ultimately, as you can tell by the descriptions I've just given, is still strictly self-serving. And that's the core of narcissism. Make no mistake, such folks know who they really are, and they know what they're really up to. They do what they do fairly automatically and somewhat unthinkingly because it has worked for them, and so they don't give it a second thought. It's a successful strategy. But that does not mean that they don't know what they're doing. It's you, unfortunately, who don't know what they're really doing or what they're really like or who they really are until it's too late. And that's the supreme importance of vetting character, especially in our time. It's the defining issue of our time. So many sociocultural factors have produced this phenomenon, have encouraged it, even rewarded it. There are aspects of modern culture that have fostered and promoted a culture of narcissism and an increase in the number of folks who are arrested in decent, moral, ethical, spiritual character development. And that's primarily why I do what I do. That's primarily why I write all the articles that I do. You can find hundreds of them free of charge on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com. Some articles on this and related topics, you will find of interest. And that's also why I've written my books in sheep's clothing, understanding and dealing with manipulative people, character disturbance, the phenomenon of our age, the Judas syndrome, how did we end up here? And my latest offering, Essentials for the Journey. And in my book, Essentials for the Journey, I expound at length about the key to growing beyond all of these narcissistic traits that we've talked about, and also the key to recognizing where someone is on the path. And that is how well they reckon with the truth, what kind of reverence they hold the truth in, you see, the covert personalities, whether they're covert narcissists or they're covert aggressors, the covert personalities among us are inherently liars and deceivers. They actually know who they are and what they're up to. The only person they want to keep in the dark is you, because they have a self-serving agenda in mind. They have no real reverence for the truth as a value in and of itself. It's completely expendable. If they think that they can advance themselves or advance an agenda or get something that they want by more devious and underhanded and deceitful ways. But in the end, in the end, they don't fool anybody. Still, they persist so long as it's working. And this kind of behavior takes its toll. We all suffer. And that's why it's my hope that with Essentials for the Journey, we come to realize how important it is that we tackle effectively what I consider to be the defining issue of our time. We have it within us to be so much more. But it takes the kind of honest self-reckoning and it takes the embracing of the principles that I talk about 
in essentials for the journey to help us on our way to becoming all that we can be. So I hope you'll avail yourself of my books and the many articles free online at drgeorgesimon.com. I certainly hope you'll avail yourself of my latest offering, Essentials for the Journey, Embracing and Living the Ten Commandments of Character, Proven Principles for a Psychologically Healthy and Spiritually Rich Life. And I also hope you tune in again next time for another edition of the new Character Matters. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dr. George Simon. Take care.